right, so <clears throat> I'm down here at the uh, creek bed near the northeast corner of my property, but on on the actual county property on the creek bed. Looking around at, uh, I think I might have found a few pieces of uh, primitive technology, we'll call it. Uh, some chipped flint that may or may not have been worked. Um, looking at this here, nice sedimentary uh, bluffs that are under here. You can see there's quite a lot of topsoil too. Um, so here in the Midwest, what we've got is, uh, you can see all of this. Let me find a good one that'll show it right here or here. All these little fossils. This is actually uh, the part of the, the sea floor of that. You've heard of the uh, inland sea that was the Midwest in the uh, end of the Cretaceous. So this was seafloor of probably about a 3 to 12 foot deep inland sea that stretched all the way up the Mississippi Valley. Uh, so uh, it's, it's possible that in some places there are, are preserved dinosaur footprints in some of this, but who knows. Um, and then the insane amount of 18 to 36 inches of uh, topsoil is deposited by a Yellowstone supervolcano eruption in the meantime. And this creek was most likely begun and formed uh, during the deglaciation, the end of the Younger Dryas or whatever, and uh, has subsequently cut through this seabed sediment. So uh, <clears throat> that's kind of what's going on here. And uh, as you can see, I brought myself a little protection while I'm down here. And you think, oh, well, you're just off your property. You're not that far from town. But uh, let me here when an animal drops its scat in an obvious place it means it is the apex or you are near its den and it may defend that den if it has offspring uh, that is in all likelihood a coyote poop or a koi wolf so <clears throat> so uh yeah we've got and you can see we've just tore the crap out of this. This is all crittered and hollow as well in the top. And uh, what you'll notice is things like uh, very recent beaver activity. <clears throat> and... Uh, Notice over here, the spot where I came up, or I came down and I'm going to have to use to go up, you can see there's, uh, it's like either a raccoon or domesticated dog, can't tell if there's a thumb. And deer in other places, the one that kind of interests me is some of these really, really big prints. That, uh, if these are made by beavers, these beavers have got to be three foot tall, like some freaking cave beavers or something. Some really, really big animal prints that, uh, I don't know, any of them that are three-toed are birds, any of them that are four-toed are canine or feline, and the five-toed tend to be, um, aquatic mammals, like, uh, we've got otters, beavers, and uh, raccoons fall into that category, I think. So, anyway, just thought I'd capture a little bit of the interesting nature going on down here. Um, the real reason it spurred me to decide to bring a brush gun with me is over here. I'll show you that real quick. very large oak tree that fell across the fence from my land. And it looked like there's maybe uh, some kind of a critter den going on.
it's this big one here. Now I know there's a fox den up the hill. I found the opening earlier. And whatever's staying here is brazen enough. Number one, you can see the places they're getting through. In and under and around. This is probably a lot of this was covered in snow, especially that tangle. But uh it's uh fox or coyote. There's a big one over here. It's gonna be hard to see from down here. And uh if any of those leaves are covering scat, that means that bobcat or uh puma were in there too. So don't really know. Not seeing a lot of footprints because I think this was a winter den and everybody was walking on the snow. And uh, over that way a little bit, um, right there where there's a bunch of flattened down white stalks, about 12, 13 feet away, that is uh, where deer rested. There's uh, pellets all over the ground over there too. And as you can see, obvious beaver activity of the larger type. There are some big beavers here. So anyway, that's what I got.